Do we start with like, hi, welcome to two guys on the room now? Let's just go with the food. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> welcome to two guys in one room. <laughs> so today, unfortunately um, for us, we have one more girl. So it's gonna be a threesome for today. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> her name is. Hi, uh, I'm Lei. You can call me Lee. Yeah. I'm Justin. Yeah, um, Lei is actually uh. Uh, uni mates as well. Uh, we met in foundation and also uni. So um, we found out that we have you know the same interests and maybe we have some things that we can share together as well. That's why we invited here today for some podcast. You totally ignored my intro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I was yeah. like, that's just in my way. And I'm Joshua, if you guys don't know yet. <laughs> so, um, Ida Yu. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm also a psycho- psychology graduate, like them. And then recently, I came in contact with Justin after I know his name, his YouTube stuff and all. Yeah, so uh, currently I'm teaching as an early childhood educator. Okay. Yeah, I think the funny thing about me and Idaiu is like, you know those kind of friends, right, when you were in uni? The kind of friends that you say hi. Actually, we don't even say hi and bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were just thinking like, how do we know each other? Yeah, I just remember her face and that's all I know about yeah, her. Yeah, just know like Yeah, I think Justin and Idaiu are closer. I don't relate really, because everybody knows me. Fuck. <laughs> Initially, I joined the education sector and then I went to the Ministry of Education and then Mm-hmm. Yeah, so after I graduate, I really wanted to find a job because I had to um, pay stuff for my family and all. Wow! So I just searched education places nearby me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, power of Google. Power of Google, that's all. <laughs> yeah, so everyone asked me how do I find a job and all. It's mainly just Google search. Uh, then I actually found another place before the one that I'm working right now. Uh, <coughs> But when I went into for interview, it's like um, they were a bit disorganized. Mm. Yeah, and then the pay was super low because at the time uh, we haven't had our convocation. We don't have that degree to get this job. That's dumb so, shit. Yeah. So she really wanted to pay me super, super low. And it was six days of work. And she expects me to work like seven to six. Seven to six. Seven to six. Doesn't even matter. Seven to six. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Seven. I need to wake up at what time? Six. 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 I want to go fuck yourself. <laughs> one year, one job, one year, two job. <laughs> when you say low, right? Like, well, what's the range? Like two to three or? No, I think below one point five. Below one point five. I think it was below one point five. Six days yeah. oh, yeah. around yeah. eleven yeah. hours. Yes. Below sixty-six hours a week. You know, below. Intern also don't get that work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I had to take care of babies there. Babies. Oh, like, toddlers. Yeah, toddlers. Like, babies. Zero. Babies. The one like sleeping. Kind of oh my baby. god. <laughs> This sounds more like a nursery <laughs> or a daycare sounds or more like a backup, you know? Might as well just stay in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, you knew right from the get go that education is the thing that you're going to train to? Actually, not really. I was just still quite lost. Oh, okay. Yeah. Same boy. Yeah. But at least she's doing something. Yeah. Like <laughs> we're kind of doing something. <laughs> but did you take psychology? One thing to do education, or is that it's more of like you took psychology and then you discover okay, I'm interested in education. Um, I would say uh, my interest in education is like so different rather than related psychology. It's more of personal interest that I think education is important, even especially for younger kids. So that's why you went to early childhood education. Yeah. So just in case there's people that's watching that don't understand the difference between like early childhood education mm-hmm. and this education, you might just give you a bit of time. So a lot of people usually think early childhood is just like taking care of that two to three years old, run around, scream and cry and stuff sounds like, like that. Sounds like a school, like, wipe the butt. Yeah, so it's really that like you go there, change the diaper, like just watch them, make sure they don't get hurt, make sure yeah. they're eating and all. But actually, 
actually, um, for the days that I'm working, we actually focus quite a lot on their social emotional. So we teach them how to handle stress, <laughs> like you fight with friends, how to uh, resolve the conflict mm. and things like that, which I don't think many people think about it. Mm. Like even if uh, eating behaviors, that's actually like, you know how these parents, now they just like put phone in front of yeah, yeah, well, like, I just let them watch it. Or like, okay, yeah. I feed you, then you can feed it and all. Mm. So, but as they grow up, they don't know how to feed themselves. Yeah, okay. yeah so those are the things that actually early childhood takes. Uh, into consideration. Into consideration yeah. mm. And how old are kids usually? So the one I'm teaching is uh, mm. around 18 months. Months 18, 18 months old. Oh. And, and you're teaching, months, 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 you're teaching them how to months. deal with stress. <laughs> 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 this child is going to be stressed. Yeah, the kids in my face are going to be stressed. They, when the parents put them in the center and they start, that's a part of stress as well when they start crying. When they're like away from the parents. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you reason to them? Like, yeah, they're one, you know? Or they're two. Like, how do you talk to them? Surprisingly, <laughs> 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 they do understand actually. Oh, yeah. I feel so dumb now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so actually, you can talk to them. Like, they actually understand what you're saying. Like, they actually understand what you're saying. They actually understand what you're saying. And stuff like eye contact or whatever, you can actually tell what they want to tell you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So that's the when you say communicate, yeah. that's what you mean. Not like verbally, <laughs> not being able to verbally talk, okay. so they kind of catch it also. And then as they grow up, they learn to speak the words. Yes. Yeah. Like instead of, you know, like we teach, oh, say mommy. Mm-hmm. So when we communicate with them, they actually learn, it's in their brain, uh. okay. <laughs> they actually learn to. Learn to speak later on. Okay, I, I just want like an example because yeah. I'm still quite confused. <laughs> so let's just say like a child came, like a 18 month yeah. old child like comes to your face uh, and jaga him up. Then what if the child's like very like what, what do you call it? Um, so PT uh, like temperamental, uh, temperamental. Yeah, temperamental. Like very easy angry, uh, very easy cry. Like how do you reason? How do you teach them to behave properly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been possible. <laughs> when I first had, like, we call it a monster baby. Mm. So we call oh, it and they just cry. <laughs> so it's like my first monster baby he came in and he just cried. Like, he just cried his heart out like, from day to like, from the moment he comes in to the day he goes home, he just cries. So for, I think, <laughs> for I think 3 4 Sometimes. months. Oh. And then suddenly one day he just stopped crying. What? That's... And he's just like fine. Yeah. Ooh, that's scary, right? <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of babies actually come in and they just cry their hearts out. Like, is it like they're getting used to the environment? Yeah, yeah. Like they, they are actually getting used to the environment. But some of them actually came in without crying. Okay, so they just come is... in and then they just chill and they just play around, never cry and ask mommy. Then the mommy come, okay, let's go home. But that is like, if if because you have psychology background, you understand with the attachment, would that and make more sense and help you to deal with that? Actually, the psychology helps a lot. Especially when we learn the developmental age and all, uh-huh. so it really helps. Because that was another question I had. Because from <laughs> my understanding, like if we have a psychology degree, we cannot practice into like more specific things. It's kind of like a doctor without the specialization. So, but I'm seeing a lot of people that if they're going into early childhood specifically, or maybe just child psychology where they deal with young kids, mm. then they can actually go in with just the degree. So is it that they provide you a training when you enter or they expect you to have a certain background to be able to deal with them? Uh, for my place, because we don't really deal with special needs mm. kids, except for a few that come in, uh, I think it's more of um, the parents training in terms of the guides, guidelines or what, what you should do, what you do's can do, yeah, okay. what the do's and don'ts. Rather than, I think for special needs, they actually go for, I remember because we went to a talk and collaborate with a special needs center, so they actually give training under ABA, Applied Behavioral Analysis. Oh, also there's a formal training for yeah, special Yeah, like a formal training mm-hmm. for that. But then like normal, like early childhood, because early childhood is also like an entire principle by itself, right? So then do you guys receive training to deal with kids? Because I mean, you, if you send us a deal with like 18 months, you send <laughs> them again. Like. I feel like this kind of thing, right? I mean, you can learn theoretically, but 
Uh, yeah, I mean, like if you, you learn practically, I think it's like from experience really. Like, yeah. how else can you learn to do Actually, things? I think the best way is to learn by uh, practicality. Mm-hmm. So, by experience. Because every kid that comes in, like, they're also different. Like, their own personality and all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can know all their personality, but uh, and the way you deal with it, uh, it's, it's very different from theory based. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap! <laughs> That's a wrap! <laughs> There are people who are doing EC education as a whole by itself, and you do psychology. That's a diploma. Yes, yeah, a diploma in EC, and like you do a degree in psychology. Like, do you have like a certain advantage, or do they have, do they have like a like an upper hand against you uh, when it comes to like this kind of industry? Mm, I'm not really sure because even though I have colleagues that are in early childhood education and yeah. graduate from that, I feel like um, not much difference. It's still a constantly learning progress. So we we'll, like when, whenever we have a new kid problem or anything, and then we come together and discuss it, how how things like that. <coughs> um, it's still a learning problem. I don't think it's much difference actually. So the theory that, part doesn't really um, make much difference. Yeah, I don't think so. It makes much difference. But I think psychology delves deeper into the psychology aspect. For example, uh, kids with autism and all. Mm-hmm. Kind of, Know a lot more. So that's more of mental health rather than just purely the ECD part. Yeah. So if I there were to be somebody that's like, okay, I'm just fresh out of SPM or I'm 17, 18 and I'm deciding like, which major to take and maybe this person has an inkling I want to do early childhood, would you actually advise them, hey, you should take an ECD diploma or should you go take the psych degree? I think it really depends on the person's interest. So if that's it, they want to learn about um, Human behavior, like depression and all, they won't get that from EC, uh, EC. Yeah, so I think. But if they were like specifically, they know kind of like because you said that you have an interest in children. Yeah. If you could like turn back time and now it's like, okay, now I pick back a new fresh start and you know where you're going. Would you mm. take EC or would you prefer to still study psychology? For me, I think I would still go for psychology because I feel like I know a lot more rather than a small group. Of Mm. Can I say that psychology is broader than ECE? Yeah, I think broader so. Broader or more in depth? Broader or more in depth? I think both broader and more in depth. But okay. I'm sure ECE will have their own in depth version, of, but it's only limited to younger kids. But speaking about children, right? Like, have you ever dealt with like children who has like mental disorders or what special what special needs? Yeah, I have dealt with some. But for example, like autism kids, mm. I do feel like I don't really know much how to handle that. Autism specifically? Yeah, autism specifically. Mm. The others is like, um, we roughly kind of can pinpoint that they are not in the same milestone with other kids. So then they know there's something wrong somewhere. Yeah, that's not to actually, say something wrong, but they're like, slower. Yeah, slower. That's something actually yeah. I want to get into that. Um, because I, I'm teaching a, a kid right now, and I remember the tuition kid I told you. <laughs> so, yeah, but basically I'm teaching this uh, this girl math and she's 9 So she's supposed to be able to know multiplication and division and everything But right now she has trouble counting And uh, she cannot tell me the time If I ask her what time is it, she doesn't comprehend how to how the minute hand and the hour hand works So then for those teachers and everything, they will say this kid is slow Or this kid like uh, and then some people will go to the extent of like, does my child have a learning disability? Mm-hmm. So because I feel that this is a stigma that if you tell a child at the age of 9, you are slow and you have a learning disability, then that you will fulfill that in them that they really believe, oh, I cannot learn it, don't bother trying. Yeah. You know? it's, it becomes a label. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It becomes a label. So that's something I want to ask you about because when I was in Form 3, I <laughs> tutor math and math now. Mm-hmm. But I failed my math until I was 15 because the teacher told me that I cannot do math and my mm-hmm. math sucks. So after that, imagine that is already I'm already mid teenager. I can roughly I got think. So to me, it's like if I cannot do math, why should I put in the effort to bother trying? And then I had a teacher that actually invested in me, and it turns out I'm not slow. I'm yeah. not dumb. It's just that I couldn't follow that one. So now, like when I'm teaching this kid, I'm actually trying to educate the parent because the parent is complaining. I'm afraid that my child is slow, or I must have pulled them out of this school. So then I think since blah 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 blah. This is yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> You're not supposed to see that. Go on. Yeah. Get to the point. Yeah. No, because like, for me, this is something that I feel really strongly about. Well, what's your question? Yeah. My question is more of like, 
have you ever felt or dealt with somebody that is slow? And how, what do you think about like the learning disability stigma and like the slow stigma or whether the child is just, they're just not learning fast enough. It doesn't mean that that child is like developmentally slow. Actually, I just, 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 uh, <laughs> I received a text from the group. Juicy. <laughs> yeah, I received a group. Yeah, but I agree with that. No, we could talk shit about you. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you created another group just to talk shit about you. Good job, guys. I think, I think that, that picture that I got fits to answer your question. Uh. So it says, if we give children what they need at their age 2, 3, and 4, they will be ready for what comes at you know, 5, 6, and 7. So children don't need to be prepped for 5, 6, and 7 at the age 2, 3, and 4. So basically everyone has their own um, development mm-hmm. and then I can understand when you say uh, parents are worried like what's wrong with their child mm-hmm. or I actually had a nephew who okay, I only had one nephew <laughs> <laughs> So my nephew um, the teacher actually told, the, told uh, my brother that he <coughs> is slow in reading and thinks that he has this dyslexia yeah. <coughs> yeah but actually he's not it's just that he's slow or maybe he couldn't catch up. Mm. So a lot of the kids that I teach as well, sometimes they come from other schools and then parents uh, tell that previously in this school the teacher said that he doesn't want to write, he doesn't want to do this, he doesn't want to do that, or um, he's slow, he has this trouble, that trouble. When it comes to us, then when we teach and then we observe, it's actually mainly because of how that teacher viewed him and he cannot sit mm. down and all. But mm. it's actually, there's um, something else behind it. For example, he cannot sit down to write, he lose his interest. Mm. It, it was because uh, he doesn't really have that strength to hold pencil. So young yeah, kids, oh. they practice their fine motor skills. Mm. So he doesn't really have that strength to hold pencil, so it makes it hard for him to write. Then he doesn't like it. Oh. Yeah, so mm. that cutting, other kids, like, they love cutting things, and for him, it's like, he can't even hold the, pencil, the, mm. the scissors properly, so he can't cut it properly. Do you guys find out about this, like, after the whole I think thing. usually it oh, always yeah. happens after you know it's after yeah. the parent or somebody already yeah. fucks the child up. Yeah, yeah. Does it tell you hey you got problem? Then only like then they believe in your problem, then only they say <laughs> yeah, only about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But then there are also parents who don't believe their child. Well, then yeah, that's a whole that's different issue. Like that's a whole different issue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because to them, is if I if I say that my child has a has a mental, to to them it's like my child chat chat. Yeah, it's uh, very yeah then it's like it's like oh yeah. my child chat chat is like disabled. You know they kept this. It's not like a different thing where like a mental illness that can be treated. To them, it's disability hunter the kid. Uh. I think that one is really stigma from society, especially mm. they view kids who move around a lot straight away. They label them like ADHD. Yeah, that's some horse shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the girl that you were telling me about in the car. Uh huh. Like you said that you went teaching yesterday, right? And yeah, she sure. was in the mood, she was just running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and then how do you categorize that? Like Exactly, because to me, right, it's just that like we all have attention spans. Yeah. So even for me at, at when we were studying, we have an attention span. Your attention span to read is much lot higher than mine. So like then if you classify me as ADHD, also not right, man. It just so happened that when they're younger, the attention span varies a lot. Like because yeah, I think I really appreciate that we have a psychology background or, because I understood yeah, yeah. because it was raining and at that time there was a thunderstorm mm. so she has too much stimulus coming in and she knows that her mom is coming back the very first time I met her she knows that the mom doesn't come back until after I leave mm. so she was very focused on me but halfway through she already know that I got this time the mom is coming back so she was waiting for the mother she doesn't want to listen to me yeah, again. She don't yeah. so then if and because actually now that you mentioned it she has had other tuition teachers other tuition teacher cannot handle her Mm. Yeah, because I don't think they understand that. Dude, at 9 years old, you ask the poor fella to do math, I also said, nah, I feel bad that I need to force yeah, this down yeah, your throat, yeah, yeah. so right? When do you decide, you know, to tell the parents that you think that something's not right? And when do you stay persistent and make sure that, you know, the child's alright? Because like, I believe if you were to, you know, tell the parents you sort of need, like, some proper diagnosis before you actually tell them, like, mm. yeah, so I'm just wondering, like, when's the right time? to do this kind of stuff? You scare me, I'm gonna check it. Keep looking at it as if not recording, huh? If I need to quote quote diagnose uh, for like better terms, mm-hmm. first I'll, I need to understand that like, what age group am I dealing with. So I've dealt with around 9 or 10, 
15, 16, and then 17, 18. So they obviously they have different um, abilities. So I need to rank them like either 17. I know whether you are slow, whether you're lazy, or whether you cannot accept the information. Hmm. My sister cannot accept math information. No matter how hard you tell her, but that doesn't mean she's slow. It's just that she cannot comprehend math as well as other subjects. So for like the nine-year-old that I was teaching, I am teaching, I think how I would be able to diagnose is just kind of like she's still interactive. So I want to get where's her strength. Her strength is more in art. So when I was talking about art for her, she is extremely comprehensive and she still knows words like pediatrician, oncologist, gyn no, this is not gynecologist group. But like she knows big words like this, she can comprehend that But maybe like spelling, she doesn't know how to spell it okay. So to me, there's nothing wrong with her With her development It's just that maybe math is just not a strong subject Because she can colour and she can paint okay. at night mm -hmm. So I think that would be a, a difference for you to gauge what are they, I mean math is not a very likeable subject for the vast majority But I think how I would tell if they really cannot is that if I'm talking to them and they don't understand what I'm saying or they're not, they cannot focus on me because her, I can maintain eye contact, I can maintain conversation but if they're starting to look up or they're starting to scribble if they're starting to just doze away when I'm speaking to them and they cannot understand um, then I guess I will be able to tell okay, maybe this child has uh, uh, a might have. Yeah, might have, may have, yeah, not, not right away but mm. may have um, yeah. for me, um, a lot of um, communicating with your parents so every day we will tell, okay, how is your child, what are they doing, how are their progress Roughly we will tell them uh, Especially when a new kid comes in We will always update them uh, How did they do their studies, how are they compared to their peers and all Yeah, but like you said, uh, different kids have different interests I actually quite agree because I do have a kid that His reading level is probably a bit slower than the others Like he couldn't even recognize alphabets Oh. At, at the age of 6 and then slowly uh, but his math is the best he can get all <laughs> correct yeah, yeah so it like, really depends on the kids mm. if it's like really a mental disorder right, it's how do I say the coverage of their deficiency you're talking about broadband or what <laughs> the coverage of their disability <laughs> <or>? <laughs> no, I mean that, I mean, <laughs> example, uh, it, it is like you know someone who really has like a mental disability. I think it's more it's it influences like math, writing, listening, and everything. Yeah. And uh, attention span in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but for your kids, it's more of like they are just lacking in one side of things, but in others they are still yeah. okay. They excel, excel as well. So. Mm. And I guess also that we are because we came from a psych background. If the child's autistic, I don't think we will. Miss Not, that they yeah. are auti that they have autism. Because like, they are upset. Yeah, yeah there's like ticks or like they, 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 they can't sit still. Like because if you've ever dealt, yeah. have you ever dealt with an autistic kid? No. You have, right? Mm. Yeah, I, we both have. So that like, right off the bat, like when you walk into the damn room, you'll know that which of the kids yeah. probably have autism. It's very mm -hmm. very painstakingly obvious. Right? Mm -hmm. Because they'll be jumping around. Most of them scream. Some of them kid. I. They I have yeah, yeah, I had I had a kid whose yeah. tip was to bang his head, either mm -hmm. like this or against the wall. Mm -hmm. So like he always does his tip. Another another one is the kid is that he will flick and then he will he will yell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean these are these are tips that we yeah. pick up like very quick. We'll know whether they have yeah. this or not. But stuff like learning disability, I think, will be a lot harder for a normal teacher to differentiate between slow. Learning and learning disability. Because mm -hmm. I think it's just easier for them, it's less paperwork. Just mm -hmm. say this kid ADHD sending away then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the amount of freaking patience it takes to sit down with a mm -hmm. kid. Like, I only see this kid like one and a half hours a time and it drains the living crap out of me. Like, and you only have one kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, at a time. So like imagine like Yeah, seriously schools are just not meant for they're not for the kids' benefit. Yeah. You know, like Sakani so who's 30, 40 power. That's like what government primary and secondary schools. Every right? every other kid, every other. I think almost. Yeah, even international schools also. It's like yeah. forty kids in a class. Mm -hmm. For yeah, yeah, your school's hard. For me, my primary I think was 40, 50. No, but your center, the one that you were. My center is uh ten to twenty or fifteen. Yeah, that's like a private like center, teacher. right? Is it? Yeah, private center. Wait, per yeah. teacher, fifteen twenty. No, no, I mean in the classroom. Uh -huh. yeah, How many teachers are there? Uh, we usually have two teachers. That's okay, I mean, one person yeah. is yeah, seven, eight. Okay. Yeah, that's okay, okay. 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 okay.
Mm. But we all know that you're passionate in you know, the industry of education. But us being us, <laughs> where is this going? And, <laughs> where is this going? <laughs> and, and the fact that we're both jobless. <laughs> oh. We actually have our resume. <laughs> I show you right now. <laughs> so, what, what's fashion to you and like, you know, why and how, how, the, how did it help you show up? I think it's a very big question. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a big oh, <laughs> For me, I view fashion as an interest, okay. but a super interest that you won't get bored of it for the rest of that book. For a long time, I would say. How do you find that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do something that I won't get bored of. <laughs> Well, at least high luck lah. Do three episodes, do three episodes, I count again. Then it's just one guy, yeah, one girl, one side. Okay, like badminton, five years plus training. I think training because you haven't been alive long enough. What do you mean? I've been here for like 23 years. You've been here for 23 years that you've been here lah. The first 12 to like 13 years, you've been here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you just like you know, you're like 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 Every Asian kid needs to learn piano, yeah. that's for sure, for damn sure. Really. <laughs> All will go art class also at one point or another. Yeah. So I think you didn't really have much, even up until university, right? Things are still kind of spoon fed to us, you know. That's why, like, that's the whole point that we want to start is because the second you cross that line of university, you directly enter the real world, really. and then people expect you to really know what you want, yeah. to have a certain skill set. But the things are that like, you haven't been making decisions on your own, uh. and to be honest, that's like something that I'm really struggling with right now. Uh. Um, finding what I really want to do because like like you said lah our life has been spoon fed and then the only decision that I made right is the decision to stay out after uni <laughs> <laughs> and also my course psychology those are the two uh, like major ones lah nothing else really yeah man. <laughs> 23 years 2 decisions 1 decade 1 of that that is my that is my decision so I said I'm going to get here 30 years and the next one I think you just now mentioned to us that you have work Some were in education, so mainly my internship was the one that pathway to my current job. Mm. So that one was education. The other times I do promoting sales, I sold like rooms for rent and mm. that kind of thing. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I could clearly know that's not my passion. Uh, <laughs> that's the punchline. The punchline mm. is that you need to try. You got to try sales and stuff like that. That's Everybody is saying, no, do sales because the money is there. But if you have no heart for it, like, no matter what you're asking yourself, you cannot. Know, but I think, like you said, mm-hmm. you had a background in education. You had tried education jobs. And then there was like, a slight interest and then you kind of... Yeah, you kind of... Yeah, went, yeah, yeah, yeah. went from there. Like. Mm-hmm. So I think for anybody that's watching the talk, you just, just try like, try jobs. Yeah, like, I try just try them. How many jobs did you try actually before you... Actually, I tried them. I remember one interview, they called me and they were like, why you do so many jobs? <laughs> Why you like everywhere? Like, Cannot you, please people, yeah. I know job experience they don't like too much job experience they don't like Wait, part time jobs right? Part-time What's wrong with that? Yeah, no? If it's yeah. time then I understand A part time job call you and ask why you do so many jobs yeah, yeah, yeah. See the video I want to do a hand job. What the fuck? I want money, money. I need to eat. Yeah, because I'm busy. Every time when the person asks me, I'm just like, uh, I guess I'm just trying out everything. Yeah. So high, yeah. Can you imagine part time? Imagine Starbucks like so many jobs. Starbucks and Amazon like, oh, why are you work so many jobs? I don't know how to copy that. Is that you? Just do it. Like it. <laughs> Just like we're doing it in a room. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that should be all for today. Mm. And call all the time. I can't say it too much. <laughs> <laughs> I have to cut it out now. I'll see you next time. Ciao. Bye bye. Transition. Oh, we didn't thank Idayu for coming. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. <laughs> we do, we do. I just want to thank Idayu for taking your time out and you know coming to no, join us in this wonderful place to do some prison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so serious, you know? Till next time, bye! Yeah. <laughs> bye, Idayu. Bye! <laughs> she's, she's, she's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs>